Hello everybody and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts 2 playthrough! So, it's finally time for another Gummy Ship segment, which I've been putting off for forever and ever and ever! And now, we are about to head to Atlantica. And, basically after this, then, we're just heading to the end of the game, which is insane. I mean, like, it's going to take us a while to get there, but we're, we're getting close now. Now, something that I want to bring up at the end of 100 Acre Wood in the last part, but didn't manage to largely because cutscene didn't want to kind of completely spoil the adorable mood. But Owl, I believe, is voiced by Andre Stodzka, who is the horse Starlight in all of the animated Rainbow Bright productions, the druid in the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, he voices the king in the Cinderella sequels, he's the Grim Creeper in Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School, and he took over the role of John Avery Whittaker on the Christian radio series Adventures in Odyssey in 2009, and I think that's kind of the main stuff. I don't know whether I do believe that it's Andrew Sodzka, because something doesn't sound quite right. But then maybe I'm thinking of an earlier voice actor and, yeah, but Considering you only had, like, one line in the entire game, yeah, it, it happens. Now, as much flack as 100 Acre Wood gets for being a mini-game world, Atlantica gets far, far, far more flack for it. And I mean, it, it's hardly surprising, because in the first game it was a proper world, and you had fighting and everything that was really cool. And then you came to Kingdom Hearts 2, and it's very different. It's very, 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 very different. And... While I completely agree that Atlantica is not as good as it could have been, I'm not necessarily completely opposed to what they did, they did to it, because it's something that I think that Kingdom Hearts can and should do, but maybe just not in this manner. And you'll understand more when we've actually reached Atlantica, I'm just blathering to try and get through the bloody gummish excitement. I mean, I have to say, it's a really pretty kind of gummy ship segment because you've got all the watery stuff and all these floating islands, it's just quite cool. But thankfully it is a lot easier than it would have been had we done it earlier because we've got better, better gummy ships. And it's not a challenge because you're meant to do this much, much, much earlier on in the game, it's just I left it to now because you can't actually complete Atlantica until about now. Because of things that you will understand soon enough. And so, let's head on into Atlantica. Oh, 
the night sky is so beautiful right after a storm. What would I give to live where you are? What would I pay to stay here beside you? What would I do to see you smiling at me? Where would we walk? Where would we run? If we could stay all day in the sun, just you and me, and I could be uh. part of your world. Girl rescued me. Her voice. So, just a fair warning, there's a lot of cutscenes in Atlantica. A ridiculous amount. And it's basically a retelling of the original film, which is awesome. I do like The Little Mermaid, it's a good film. If maybe slightly flawed in its uh, moral lessons. Sora! Donald! Goofy! Oh, hi there! Forget how to swim already? Kinda, I guess. Then you boys got to practice. You follow Flounder. He'll show you what to do. Come on, Sora. You can do it. So, we get to learn the swimming controls all over again. Don't worry, you don't actually have to do really any swimming in this uh, version of Atlantic, which is a godsend, but... Anyway, so Ariel is voiced here by Jodie Benson, as she was in the original film. You'll also recognise Benson as voicing Barbie in Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3. Which is just awesome. She's also the voice of Helen of Troy in the Hercules TV series. She voices Anita in 101 Dalmatians 2 Patches London Adventure. Uh, Jenna in Bolto 2 Wolf Quest, and well, the Bolto, Bolto films in general. And she's also Sam in Enchanted, um, which is just awesome. But pretty much most of the work she has done is as Ariel. Although apparently, I don't quite know what this thing is, but apparently Wikipedia is mystically telling me that she's involved, she's doing voice work in Star Fox Wii U. Because apparently in Star Fox, uh, because in Star Fox 64 and Star Fox 64 3D she voiced Cat Monroe and Sally Brown. Apparently, which is insane. Also, you're now seeing what the gameplay of Atlantica is. It's, it's, a, it's a rhythm game. It's a flawed rhythm game because the rhythm's really odd. Anyway, uh, Prince Eric is voiced by Christopher Daniel Barnes as he was in the original film, and basically he also voices the Prince Charming in the Cinderella sequels, and he's probably most well known for voicing Spider-Man in the 1994 animated series as well as Greg Brady in The Brady Bunch. And he's been in quite a lot of stuff as well. Then as Flounder, you have Parker Gorris, who um, 
I believe, started... Oh, well. Yeah, started voicing Flounder in Little Mermaid Ariel's beginning, which is Little Mermaid 3. Um, or, actually no, he did that, that's his last role as Flounder, oh god. And then we have Kevin Michael Richardson as Sebastian, who you'll recognise as Chairman Drek in Ratchet and Clank, Tartarus in Halo 2, Robert Hawkins in Static Shock, Captain Gantu in Nilo and Stitch, it's just, yes! And, yeah, he's just awesome. But now... <laughs> this one. So, while you would maybe expect the game to utilise the amazing songs that are in the original movie, they decided to create some original stuff. Everyone hates this song with a burning passion. Yeah. I like rhythm games. And I don't disagree with this in principle, but just really a song like this. It's it's just not it's not good. Not that the rhythm is really weird. It's very easy, come on and just take a chance and shake a fan. Really annoying thing with this is it's bloody catchy. Like, stupidly, ridiculously catchy. Swim this way, we'll dance and we'll play. Now it's very easy, come on in, just take a chance to shake a fin. Oh. I, I do apologise, I'll probably be singing a reasonable amount throughout Atlantica. Particularly on songs that you know are good, but still. <laughs> I don't know what. I mean, I can sort of understand maybe one original song, but they don't have anything that's actually, you know, amazing. Swim this way, we'll dance and we'll play now. It's very easy, come on and just take a chance and shake a fin. Swim along, just join in the song. A musical for everyone to have a lot of fairly fun. And that very line is pretty much one of the things that everyone brings up when they say how much they hate Atlantica. Because he wants to have finny fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, Donald. It it's not not a good idea. Your Majesty, we have visitors. King Triton. I certainly hope there hasn't been a need to use that keyblade of yours. Nope, everything's fine. Not a heartless in sight. Your Majesty, our guests, they want to sing in the musical. Well, that sounds like a splendid idea. We may need your help after all. You see, I'm afraid Ariel's still infatuated with the human world. A busy rehearsal schedule might be just the thing she needs to stop thinking about life up on the surface. So, King Triton here is voiced by the amazing Kenneth Mars, who is, ha, sadly passed away. Um, 
Yep. Oh, oh. Sog. Um, you'll probably recognise, well, most people would recognise him as King Triton. Um, but he's also Mal Otto in Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, Littlefoot's grandfather in The Land Before Time. King Colbert in Thumbelina. And... He's been in a number of things, but I think King Trident's probably the one that most people would recognise him from. Ariel, that girl's acting strange again. Probably been flitting around on the surface. Oh, the Sea King's gonna have my class with this. Come on, we gotta keep rehearsing. I'm sorry, but I don't feel like it. No, Ariel! I've got an idea, Sebastian. You do? I know how to cheer Ariel up. Come on, follow me! Now, something else that's kind of interesting is that up until this game, I didn't know that Haley Joel Osment could sing. I mean, it's, it's kind of technically should be a given considering most actors, or at least most successful actors, can sort of sing in some form these days. And also he got involved with Disney, and generally they only tend to pick people who can act, sing, and so on and so forth. It's not always the case, but they do tend to like to do that. Um, and it wasn't until after Kingdom Hearts 2 that I eventually saw The Jungle Book 2, realised Hilly Jolosman was in that, and that he sings in it, and... He sings in this, he's a very good singer, actually. And also, we get introduced to the other frustrating element of Atlantica. Basically, every time you finish a song, it kicks you out and tells you you need a certain type of magic. Even if you already have that type of magic. It's frustrating. It's the same thing that 100 Acre Wood does. It boots you out when it really doesn't need to boot you out. And you're just like, come off it, really? Why are you doing this to me? And now whilst stuff's happening before we go into the next mission, because I kind of want to sing along to the next song. The timing is really bizarre in this stuff because most stuff you kind of want to hit it on the beat and here for some odd reason it's just off the beat and Ariel. I don't think I'll ever quite get it because it's not like to come with us, in time with the music. I mean, for, for someone who, you know, likes music and likes rhythm games, having stuff that's not on beat is infuriating. It's a pretty cool statue, huh? I look like some kind of prince. A prince? Yes, here we go. It's time for probably the most famous song, or one of the most famous songs from The Little Mermaid. Part of your world. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? The girl who has... Everything. Look at this trove, treasures untold. How many wonders can one cavern hold? Looking around here, you'd think, sure, she's got everything. I've got gadgets and gizmos a plenty. I've got hues and some what's its galore. You want thing or bobs? I got twenty. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. I want to be where the people are. 
I wanna see, wanna see I'm dancing, stroking around on those, what do you call them? Oh, feet. Where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free, wish I could be part of that world. Also, they cut it down. So for God's sake, guys. Ariel, it's like you made us sit through the entirety of you, swimming you know? this bloody way, but no, not can't let us sit through the entirety of part of your bloody world. No. What am I going to do? But, I, mean, I have to say, part of your world is probably one of the most difficult missions in the game, purely because you have to get multiple excellence in a row, and if you are awful at getting the excellence, then you're screwed, basically. But... Well, I love part of your world. It's a wonderful song. It's really awesome. And we have a little bit of fun happening in the next part because we get another amazing song from The Little Mermaid. Unfortunately, it's the only other one that we get. Which makes me sad. Because there are other excellent songs in The Little Mermaid that really d did just deserve to be used, you know? Yeah, Donald, y you ain't got a good enough voice for that. I mean, I can still sing, but it, it doesn't sound as wonderful as Ariel's song, you know? But, complicated sheet music, apparently we need more power for this. Whatever.